Hello all and welcome to another question and answer show with me, True Slayer. As always, if you have anything that you would like to ask me or get my opinion on in the world of pro wrestling, uh, ask away. I will give you my opinions on it if I think it's a good question or if I think it's relevant. So, um, let's get started here. Uh, are you are you not fond of Survivor Series War Games type matches? Um, I can't remember you ever talking about them, and why don't brands still do these types of matches? Um, well, I talk about war games all the time, I thought. Maybe I'm wrong. But um, Survivor, the Survivor Series matches, eh, I'm not too big on, to be completely honest. I mean, they're okay, but I, I've never been a fan of them. Um, WWE doesn't use war games simply because um, it's... A little too co it's too costly for them to build to have a ring that to have two rings set by set by side because that's seating that they could be charging and they're not charging and things of that nature. So that's why it's kind of a logistical thing. Um, other than that, I don't know. But Triple H does want to do a War Games match. So I would imagine at some point we will see one sooner or later. But that's why. And uh, you know we always see uh, Survivor Series. You know. Uh, once every great, you know, every Survivor Series for the most part now, so there you go. Um, me and my buddies always argue about who the top wrestler ever is, Mike and Ring, and I always say Ric Flair, and they always say, how can you not say Hulk Hogan? I know you think Luthez is the best, but who would you rank higher, Ric Flair or Hogan? Also, when was the last five-star match in WWE? Last five-star match in WWE, I believe was uh, Triple H versus um, Undertaker Hell in the Cell 1. Um, as far as who's better, I would say Ric Flair only because Ric Flair is going to be more to the business historically than Hulk Hogan was. And yes, I know people will say, how can you say that? Well, Hulk Hogan meant, financially, Hulk Hogan meant a lot to this business for one period of time. Ric Flair is going to be the guy that everyone's going to look back on and want to be. Everyone's going to want to eliminate you know, B, copy, all of those things. So I would say he is the better of the two. It's kind of like comparing um, Babe Ruth to, uh, to let's see, Babe Ruth. Oh, man, I can't even think of that. To Ty Cobb. Um, you know, Babe Ruth gets all the glory. Ty Cobb's the guy that's probably the best baseball player of all time, not Babe Ruth. So there you go as far as that. A true story, what do you think of the recent news of Ric Flair want to be released from WWE? Also, if ROH could bring him in for a Friday and a Saturday show, who would you like to see him face? Keep up the good work. First of all, as far as this goes, a lot of people have talked about it. Um, the whole thing is Ric Flair just doesn't like the way he's being used. He said publicly he hasn't been fired, but he has not shown up, and he basically has basically told the WWE either start using me correctly or I'm going to leave, which I do understand because this is supposed to be kind of his swan song, and they're not apparently doing what he thinks he should be getting, and I think Ric Flair, if this is his swan song, deserves to go out the way he wants to go out myself, so I don't blame him for kind of throwing a little hissy fit my opinion. So I don't think he's going to be an ROH, so no need to answer that. Okay, so which company had the best year yet in your opinion? I guess you mean so far? Um, the, the company that I think has had the best year so far in all of pro wrestling, I would say, eesh, I guess I'll go with Ring of Honor only because I haven't seen too much CMLL this year, so I'll go with them. Um, but, you know, none of the Japanese promotions have really blown me away. Yes, folks, you can come on here and you can talk about New Japan all you want. I'm not going to give them any credit whatsoever because, in my opinion, they're not that good right now. Um, but I, I would throw CMLL in there um, from what I've seen, but I haven't seen that much from them. So, there you go. Uh, hey, True Slayer, who do you think CZW hasn't caught? Why, okay, why do you think CZW hasn't caught an underground following in the same way ROH and old ECW has. I think it's a great underground alternative to WWE, TNA, and even ROH. Not to say it's better than those promotions, but I think it's a good alternative. Um, CZW had his chance, and his chance was right after um, ECW went out of business itself, and XPW were kind of supposed to take that mantle, and they failed miserably. CZW has kind of imploded in and upon itself. 
I've never liked CZW that much because even though they will put on good matches, they'll turn around and they'll put on, um, I won't even call them hardcore matches. I'll just call them garbage matches <coughs> because that's what they are in my opinion. And, you know, the thing that's, that Paul Heyman got was that he was stealing hardcore stuff from early FMW. And FMW, yes, they had the hardcore stuff, but most of their hardcore stuff had, you know, psychology behind it. You can do hardcore wrestling and have psychology around it. That's something CZW's never done. That's something also IW Mid-South hasn't, you know, hasn't done. They do a better job, in my opinion, than CZW, but that, and that's why. Is that they, it's not been a real alternative. It's just been kind of seen as like garbage, um, pro, uh, garbage wrestling. So there you go. Hey, True Slayer, what brand do you think the WWE should send Jericho Send Jericho if he goes back there? I would say ECW. That way he doesn't have to worry about um, Triple H kind of interfering in him. SmackDown would be an okay. It would be okay, too, because they do need some more stars. But I'd like to see him in ECW myself. I think he would. He, there he could be the man and all of that. Hey, True Slayer, I was wondering what your thoughts of Project 6, 161. I know you've touched on it briefly in the past, but I'm extremely interested as to who you think may be in the stable. I've heard rumors, Necro, RVD, Sabu, Heyman, Shelley, etc. I personally cannot wait for the 161. 161st show, September 15th. I'll be there live in case you were wondering. Well, for those of you who don't know what Project 161 is, it's an angle in ROH. It's these guys that have pretty much just been, you know, supposed to be kind of a rebellious group that's getting ready to come into ROH for unknown purposes, though they've been apparently trying to get under the Briscoe skin. So, but um, they've said some unkind things about ROH. Um, as far as the rumors go, well, I can pretty much tell you that Shelley, you know, um, Shelley's not going to be in there. He's in TNA, so you can stretch that out. And all the people that say, "Oh, well, if it's not Shelley, it's going to be," you know, it's it, it's not going to mean anything. You know, people didn't think it was going to be Shelley when it first started. If it was Heyman, I'd be all about it being Heyman, to be completely honest. I would like that. Same thing with Sabu, um, Necro, RVD. And they've done angles like that before, but I think it would work. And I, I, But honestly, I have no idea. But for those of you that wonder, if you go to WWEproject161.com, tomorrow night, apparently, they're going to unveil something, and we're going to find out who these guys are. So there you go. Uh, let's see. I demand to know why King of the Dust match... 1995 was not in your top five shows because it's a one match show. There's only one match on there that's that I would recommend anybody seeing, and that's the final. Other than that, who cares about that show? I mean, completely, completely. Um, question for you, True Slide. What do you think about CM Punk winning the ECW title due to the Royds thing? I know he deserves it, but you think he should have won it through a tournament, taking down some of the main heels on ECW like Thorne and Burke, and then the final Big B. Actually. While I love CM Punk having the title, I thought Big V should have been the guy that got the title. I don't think CM Punk should have gotten it yet. I know you all are crying with your eyes, with your ears over your, your hands over your ears. But I firmly believe that. Um, I love CM Punk, but I don't think it was his time yet. I, I think they could have built him up a little bit more so that when he won it, the reaction would have been bigger than even it was. And it was a pretty big reaction he won it. And I think Big V would have been an OK alternative the way they have built him as this big, huge monster heel. So... I wouldn't have had any, any problems with that whatsoever. Um, why do a lot of people mention how bad Orton's attitude is and why he shouldn't win this, he should job uh, for six months, etc., but never mention the others when backstage attitude, Hogan, Nash, Hogan, Batista, Angle, Teddy Hart, early 90s, HBK, Triple H, and others. Um, so what makes Orton so special that he receives 90% of the bashing from the people with attitude? Um, because he's the guy doing it. Now, I've talked about Teddy Hart. I've talked about the fact that I don't like Teddy Hart. Um, but he's the one doing it now. That's why I talk about Orton. Um, all those guys have done it in the past, and that's why that I say that. Um, major retailers like Best Buy sell ROH TVs, but they only they only sell a Round Robin Challenge 1 and Night Appreciation and two others. Why do they do this and not sell the other DVDs? Are they testing its selling ability or something? No, these are by, I believe it's Takedown Masters. They're actually edited versions of uh, the first few ROH shows. Um, it was a distribution deal they had. It, it's, it's how I originally got into ROH, so there you go. So it, it, it works to that extent, that part of it. But that's why. So if, if you ever wanted to know, there you go. Um, that's all for this one, and I will talk to you later. You guys have a good one, and uh, I'm out.